Greetings, everyone. My name is Raghav Tirupati. I'm the Medical Director of Infectious Disease at Cure Drug Repurposing Collaboratory. Um, today, I'm here with you to talk about obtaining and using Ticovirimat, also known as TPOX, for treatment of monkeypox through the expanded access IND program of the CDC. As you guys know, monkeypox has rapidly spread across the US and the globe. It has been declared a public health emergency in the US. The WHO has declared it a public health emergency of international concern with the hope of channelizing resources to folks at most need for the same. Monkeypox spreads primarily through close and intimate contact. It can affect people of any age, gender or race. However, the 2022 outbreak in the US has disproportionately affected the gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men. As we in the ID community know, there is a distinct lack of proven effective and safe treatments, and hence TPOX is one of those promising potential options based on animal studies. Ticovirumat has a theoretical basis for improving outcomes in monkeypox. There is some anecdotal evidence in the literature of Ticovirumat speeding up resolution of some symptoms. However, the evidence is, par and, uh, is very sparse and there is an urgent need for clinical trials. Despite the endemicity of monkeypox in West Africa, Ticovirumat trials have not been conducted to date and it has been approved for smallpox based on studies of primates infected with monkeypox virus. NIAID now plans to conduct clinical trials beginning September of 2022 on TPOX as treatment for the monkeypox virus. In the meantime, the approval for smallpox was based on a a little known rule called as animal rule, where the efficacy of drugs for life threatening conditions to be established based on well-controlled studies uh, in human uh, in animal models of human disease or condition of interest when it is not feasible or ethical to conduct human trials. Now, before we go into the process itself, the the main indications for TPOX as highlighted in this slide from a screenshot of the CDC's website include excruciating inogenital or oral lesions, patients who have immunocompromising conditions, which includes untreated HIV, encephalitis, patients who have eye involvement like keratitis or uh, anophthalmitis, and atopic dermatitis. These are the main indications for three parts, at least in the current scenario. So TPOX is available through the National Strategic Stockpile through an expanded access investigational new drug program from the CDC. We will talk a little bit about EAIND in the next few slides. Uh, in my personal experience, I have procured TPOX in, for uh, two patients with clinical features consistent with monkeypox, one of them who had a confirmed monkeypox PCR. Um, these patients had anogenital lesions when I initiated the process, like elsewhere across the country. One was a confirmed positive and other was probable with pending tests. CDC uh, in the earlier days had a significant amount of paperwork to be completed, which led to uh, a lot of provider time and effort taken to get approval for TPOX. But in the last few weeks has streamlined and simplified the process of obtaining TPOX, which has significantly reduced the amount of paperwork needed. Um, for the viewers, there is also a resource that you could use created by Dr. Erika Shanai, uh, which you can find in the link here, which is a smart text tool for EPIC to fill up some of the forms needed for this process. Clinicians and care facility pharmacists can request TPOX by contacting their state or territorial health department. Uh, remember, your local health department clinician is your friend and advocate in expediting the approval from the CDC. And that is at least uh, what my experience was with our local DOH. You can also directly contact the CDC's Emergency Operations Center and uh, with this email. 
A little bit about what is an expanded access IND program. An EAIND is granted by the Food and Drug Administration uh, to allow the use of an investigational drug. The primary purpose is mainly to diagnose, monitor, or treat a severe, a serious, or uh, life threatening disease or condition when the disease lacks therapeutic alternatives. It is not primarily intended to obtain information about the safety or efficacy of the drug. It increases, however, the awareness, knowledge, and facilitates the use of experimental drugs while protecting patient safety and avoiding interference with the development. The EAINDs may be provided for drug not being developed, drug being developed, but patient cannot access the trial, drug previously approved but no longer available at this time, and has a similar profile to an approved drug that is unavailable. So there are several other drugs which ID doctors use available through the EIND like artisanate. Intermediate size patient population IND is what is being used by the CDC for this drug. Um, the intermediate size patient population is for multiple populations requesting a drug for the same use. Uh, they are generally smaller than those typical of a treatment IND or treatment protocol. This IND allows access to and use of TPOX for treatment of orthopox infections, including monkeypox. So it's not exclusively for monkeypox. Clinicians and facilities do not need to request and obtain their own INDs. So that's a good advantage, as well as um, the facilities requiring a reliance agreement. CDC IRB will provide a pre signed reliance agreement to sign documenting reliance on the CDC IRB. So CDC has made it very streamlined and easy at this time. So there are several forms that need still to be completed by the healthcare providers. The main ones among them are the informed consent form to be obtained from the patient before the treatment begins, the patient intake form, which is the baseline assessment, the FDA form 1572, which is for the investigator, for, and you only need to fill this form one time per facility. If you're taking ticovirumab by mouth, uh, so in terms of the informed consent form, you're mainly talking to the patient about what uh, this treatment involves. Uh, I would always recommend counseling the patient about ticovirumab because uh, it needs to be taken with a full fatty meal 30 minutes before ticovirumab and should take it uh, with a full glass of water. The meal should be about 600 calories with 25 grams of fat. And I give some of these examples to patients to get an idea of what 600 calories mean. Uh, there is a complete handout there for children who are unable to swallow capsules of how we can uh, uh, facilitate care for them. I would, I would encourage you to visit the CDC's website for the same. Those who are unable to take capsules or eat a full meal may take IV ticovirumab, and there is dosing uh, scenarios for that on the CDC website. And this would mainly apply for people who have severe dysphagia or dinophagia and are hospitalized with severe illness. You also want to tell people about the common side effects associated with ticovirumab, which includes headache, vomiting, nausea, stomach pain, dizziness, mainly with IV ticovirumab. There could be injection site reactions like pain, swelling, and redness only with IV again. So it's a four page form. We are just putting uh, the screenshots of the form so that you could get familiar with it. The other thing I would always want uh, folks to highlight is if they are on repaglinide, uh, a combination can lead to hypoglycemia and should be avoided. And so a med reconciliation for repaglinide is always important. And even for drug drug interaction with other medications is is the right thing to do. Uh, safety profile in pregnancy is limited. Um, the drug is um, uh, not supposed to be used in pregnancy, but again, it, it differs from patient to patient. Uh, the drug is free for, uh, and paid for by the CDC. Um, all other costs should be taken up by uh, the commercial insurance, Medicare, uh, Medicare, or sometimes, unfortunately, it may be passed on to the patient. Um, the patient has the right to refuse to cover mat after informed consent, and the form can be found on the CDC's website, and we have put a hyperlink here. 
The patient intake form uh, is the second form that you need to fill up, and it's a pretty straightforward form um, ex uh, explaining some demographic details and having some uh, specific details about date of onset of symptoms, date of exposure, and also the indication for Ticoverimad. Um, I would always recommend uh, attaching the EMR note to this um, uh, this form because it makes it so much easier for the person reviewing the forms at the other end. The CDC also encourages obtaining pictures of the lesions, uh, but this is not always a must, and we always need to take into consideration patients' uh, privacy and confidentiality into uh, uh, into consideration while making this decision. The form for the intake uh, uh, is uh, found here on the hyperlink. Again, screenshots of the forms for your review. The third form is the FDA investigator uh, 1572 form, uh, one per site, one investigator uh, per site. Uh, the investigator must Possess the qualifications and experience to administer TPOX, which is pretty uh, baseline for all US clinicians. Uh, they must abide by the protocol and agree to the FDA's reporting requirements and should be qualified to conduct the investigation and committed to abide by regulations. So other things that I found helpful to know is uh, treatment with TPOX can begin upon receipt after informed consent is obtained. In our case, the medication was shipped to us even before the test came back positive and uh, it was already dispensed to uh, the patient with suspected monkeypox, um, even though the test was pending at that time based on high pretest probability. Um, there was no pre-registration required for clinicians or facilities, which is a welcome move. Uh, forms requested under the EAIND can be returned to the CDC after treatment begins. This is very true. Um, TPOX use is not considered human subjects research and uh, federal wide assurance requirements do not apply. Uh, virtual and televis are allowed, televisits are also allowed as an option for prescription for TPOX, which is again another welcome move. Uh, given the restrictions with uh, infection prevention and isolation in an office setting, which makes it um, uh, a little bit uh, challenging uh, to get these patients in uh, for certain visits. However, in our case, we did get the patient into our office and uh, we evaluated the patient first time in the office, but subsequent visits have been on telemedicine. Uh, and the clinical outcome form, which is uh, during and post treatment, and this need not be filled up on the initial assessment. Um, I would always encourage folks to do this, to take photos at baseline and post treatment to follow lesion prog uh, uh, progression and healing. Um, uh, there is an optional uh, uh, form that can be filled out to send samples for resistance testing as well as PKPD of Ticoverimat. Um, I'm planning to follow up all of these patients uh, uh, at 7, 14, and 21 days after starting treatment. 14 will be end of treatment. 21 days will be seven days after starting treatment. Again, the patient uh, 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 clinical progress form also, or clinical outcome form also has these time durations as uh, set thresholds to reevaluate the patient. This is the form I was talking about. It's pretty straightforward. Um, as you see, um, uh, there are different questions asked about how patient responded to treatment, whether the patient was in the hospital uh, hospital for any of the duration of the treatment, what was the return, uh, what was the outcome after completion of treatment, was there any sequelae, was there scarring, um, uh, at the same time, as you can see, is the 7, 14, and 21 days uh, after uh, 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 initiation of treatment for reevaluation and also upon discharge uh, from the service. You could send PK uh, sampling, uh, which could also help to advance the science with respect to ticovirumab. You could send scab sampling for resistance testing being done at the CDC. So however, these are all optional. The patient also is encouraged to keep a diary of uh, different symptoms, uh, including pain, onset of any new lesions after starting treatment, 
uh, whether the symptoms are getting worse, uh, the same or better after starting treatment, as well as side effects with respect to takeover mat. I, our group has put together uh, a few resources here, both from the CDC's uh, 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 panel of resources, as well as from the FDA for your uh, uh, access and um, uh, reading. Finally, I would encourage all of you guys to uh, uh, help us also advance the science with respect to ticovirumab and contribute your cases to CureID um, to better understand uh, the utility of ticovirumab uh, uh, about when uh, it needs to be started, when would it be the most helpful, does it really help with long-term sequelae, what are the uh, safety concerns, what are the possible side effects. Um, so it would only be possible when there is a collection of cases or case series that can be um, uh, put together uh, based on real world experience with Tikovari Mat. We encourage all of you to contribute your, uh, your cases to CureID. It takes less than five minutes. We have streamlined our case report form uh, very, uh, very much to the providers that are being respectful of their time. Um, we are also coming up with a monkeypox specific um, uh, case report form, which uh, we will be uh, uh, bringing out uh, with the option of a patient portal where patients themselves can also put in uh, these cases. Uh, talking about CURE, it's a collaboration between NIH and CATS and FDA, so it's a completely federal, uh, federal supported project but there is a lot of uh, public-private partnership uh, that goes into CURE. The goal is to collect and better understand real-world data on uh, using repurposed drugs for infectious diseases, and it comes from a very good place. Uh, the collected case reports are completely de-identified, and you can even anonymize the submission if you don't want to be identified. The current Cure ID case report uh, form, which is disease agnostic, can be used to share cases of use of ticovirumab as well as any other drug treatment for monkeypox. So please remember it's not specific to ticovirumab. If you are in a certain part of the world where ticovirumab is not available and you have used other drugs and have found success, we would like to know about it. Please contribute to cure. Um, as we already talked, the monkeypox specific case report is now under development and is expected by the end of August. Um, Please visit Cure ID, register, and share your treatment experience, not just about monkeypox, but all other uh, infectious diseases at large, and most importantly, neg neglected tropical infectious diseases. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, please write to us if you have any additional questions or concerns. And then once you're done with all of it, your T-Pox will arrive. Thank you.